Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and this is episode one of building our new step-by-step -step video built here at Genesis Models, which is going to be of Airfix's 148th scale British Forces Patrol and Support Group, um, which in this kit we have a Western Lynx AH7 Land Rover and some British soldiers. Uh, now with this kit, I'll basically pick this for our links here this is what we're going to be building um, which is going to be rather cool for us to actually build a video make a video build of doing a helicopter for the first time it's the first time we've ever done a helicopter which does kind of change things in the sense of weathering um, because I don't know helicopters seem to come into that sort of in between armored vehicle weathering and aircraft weathering um, because they tend to get a bit more dirty than aircraft but they're not as dirty as uh, you know armored vehicles it sort of gives us a little bit of an in-between sort of um, you know for instance this is going to be in a desert theater of war so we could probably dust them up all deserty as much as you would say this Land Rover that we have here so um, it does give us that opportunity to do um, a bit of armored sort of weathering but on a helicopter so that should be quite interesting to do um, and this is rather a stunning kit as well and it's going to be in step-by-step -step format so you know we're going to show you everything from the beginning of the build right through to the end uh, from basic intermediate advanced stuff pretty much everything i do is going to get um, filmed with this kit so um, that should be good for pretty much absolutely everybody who is into modeling um, so without further ado what we're going to do we're just going to do a nice quick inbox review of this kit i'll even show you the land rover and the infantry as well uh, because i mean i might i don't know i might actually go off and um maybe build them to see how my mojo is as the the video build goes along um, also to bear in mind there is some nice aftermarket parts that you can get for the links which is rather cool um, and i wouldn't mind getting them in but it depends how quick i get them in because i literally have just gone off and picked this right now started filming this right now um, so it depends how far i get in the build and it depends how quick um, the aftermarket parts get to me so um, you know as much as i do so just you know, wait and see as the episodes go by uh, to find out whether or not we get some aftermarket parts going on in this or not. Um, or whether we go off and, you know, say do the Land Rover, we could do dioramas with this. Um, I am I am just sort of kind of just kind of, you know, blag this as I go along and just see how we go um, as the videos go along. So let's have a nice inbox review of this and check out this absolutely stunning kit by Airfix. So starting off this inbox review, uh, as you can see from the box art, you know, you've got a nice selection of um, figures, Land Rover, links in here. If we turn the box upside down, it does even give you a really good, nice quality picture of sort of like the finished models all nicely painted up and everything to really sort of show you what you are getting in the box um, and i must say that land rover does look 
rather beefy and rather cool and infantry do um, so it's a nice added little extra now the kit itself this particular kit costs around about the 45 pound mark which isn't a bad price for what is essentially uh, three kits rolled into one as well as um, it does include um, I'll just show you now. It does include all these acrylic paints, you know, and some crappy paint brushes and some glue, um, which, you know, with what I teach you into becoming a professional modeler, to be honest with you, you don't want to be using the glue, you don't want to be using the paint brushes, and the paints aren't particularly um, kind of you don't get that much it's probably best to just go out and buy all that kit yourself anyway but if you're doing it with like the kids or grandkids you know that stuff's just fine just to whack something together um, so moving along with our inbox review here so to start off with um Oh, I did actually forget to mention, if you did want to go off and buy, say, just the links, you can go off and buy that. They do do like a um, a Navy version. I think they do a German version, an Army version. They've got all different versions. So they're going to be, you know, a lot cheaper if you go off and buy them separately, if you don't fancy building a Land Rover or the infantry, or maybe you want to build the infantry. They do sell all this stuff separately um, and obviously for cheaper. So moving along, let's get out our first sprue here um, now the Lynx has three grey sprues all together with one clear plastic but if we move you in on our main bit of surface detail here we have um, the fuselage section of our helicopter which is just riddled with all these really tiny tiny raised rivets which absolutely are going to look absolutely stunning um, but they are just so tiny it would be very hard to replace them so you do want to make sure well I'm going to show you how to just make sure we be careful in any kind of sanding or filling not to remove this detail because it is pretty stunning detail we've even got raised uh, recessed rivets uh, recessed panel lines um, raised areas you know pretty much what's on the aircraft um, you know this literally has all that lovely detail and again as you can see all this rivet work going on here looking absolutely stunning uh, got some internal detail here as well all these like diamonds on here that is going to look so stunning all painted up with a nice wash going on in there we've got the the belly side as well just here again we've got all this very fine recess rivet detail going on inside there um, we've got the the floor here as well again we've got lovely detail going on there i mean actually i am quite stunned um because this being an airfix kit i mean you know airfix is good but they're not like normally this good actually i mean there is so much gorgeous detail going on uh, inside there absolutely um stunning for airfix um, moving along to the next couple of sprues here, uh, we have uh, all our propellers on here, um, if we look a little bit closer we have uh, all our seats and stuff, now it's a little bit strange but we do have um, hardly any flash on this but then there are one or two places where there is a fair bit of flash um, which uh, I'll have to show you in a bit when I get to it but you know we've got our seat detail here which is looking very crisp um, looking highly detailed as well let's just turn this over um, we do have uh, seat belts on here as well as you can see from our seat detail moving around we've got some more seats our um for our cargo area where all the um, infantrymen can go good detail there our rear rotor blades you know they're looking rather detailed again hardly any flash on there and then there's just like a load of tiny tiny little pieces um, which goes all over these helicopters which um, is going to be a bit um, fragile to mess around with but you know looking good um, sort of like some engine covers here as well again you can see all those raised rivets going on there uh, moving along we've got our next piece uh, which I do where is it gone now I think I might have put that away I do want to show you the instrument display panels wherever they've gone 
Ah, here they are. Um, here we have our instrument display panels, which was on our first piece. I just want to show you because it is um, very important to show you. Let's get you on camera. Um, as you can see, instrument display panels, there is like literally no detail on there whatsoever. Um, the only option you've got with the kit is decals. Decals go on there and that is that. Um, which is rather a bit of a shame because this kit is looking really cool, very detailed, highly detailed, um, above average for airfix. And then they go along and sort of do that with the instrument display panels. But anyway, moving on along to our final um, grey plastic here. Uh, you know, we've got all these tiny uh, bits of detail going on here. And as you can see, looking rather stunning. Um, there's a fair bit of flash around that one little piece there. Um, but then you don't see it anywhere else. It just crops up here and there um, of a load of flash and then just none anywhere. Uh, eject pin marks, um, I did notice there was some just here. Um, whether they're going to be seen or not, I don't know, but there is a fair few eject pin marks uh, underneath there um, and a few other bits of detail as you can see all looking rather rather stunning for airfix um, highly detailed very crisp uh, I'm really loving the look of this kit uh, then we have our clear bits of plastic uh, which we do have a fair bit uh, now looking at our biggest piece looks absolutely stunning crystal clear I'm not seeing any faults with that at all absolutely stunning piece of clear plastic um, however there is one or two I don't know how well you can see it but you might just be able to see there's a little bit of a cobweb effect just on this piece and it does slightly go on to this one I think you could just pick that up on camera a little bit of a cobweb effect uh, no matter how much sanding or solutions you use you're just not going to get rid of that that is down to the core of the plastic um, and I think there was another bit somewhere else uh, yeah there's this one little piece just here there's a I don't think you can pick that up on camera um, but I think we can get away with it I mean it's not riddled with it it is you know you've got to get it you've got to sort of see at the right angle to get it and whatnot um, you know there's nothing we can really do about it um, but it's not too bad uh, but that big piece is looking rather stunning quickly moving along now we have our decals just here um, these are possibly done by cartograph but they've never put them on the decals it's normally somewhere on the box Yep, there's a yep. There we go. Cartograph is just on the box. So these are cartograph decals, best in the world. Going to work fantastic with micro salt and set. Um, and looking at them, um, they are looking rather rather detailed. We've got our Land Rover decals just here as well, so they're keeping them nice and separate. Um, they do have um, sort of like this silver outline for the uh, propellers. If you want to um, put decals on, I'd personally just um, spray them on. Um, and then here we go. Here is all the instrument display panel decals. As I say, it is a bit of a shame that you've got to use decals. Um, but you can pick up some aftermarket part photo etch or something like that. Um, but yeah, decals looking rather good, nicely spaced out as well, um, which is also quite good, so you haven't got to be so careful with cutting them out. Um, those are the decals. Um, moving along, the instructions. And the instructions, typical um, Airfix instructions. You do have a couple of options in here. I mean, starting off, um, different positions of where you put your seats, whether you put your MG guns in um, or not. Uh, it does look like you do build like a, a inner sort of shell where you've got all your cargo area and your cockpit section, um, and then you bring your two fuselage halves onto onto that. You can have your propellers in the stowed position or, or nicely opened up. Um, but yeah, I mean, apart from that, I mean, it does sort of get you there you know, fairly reasonably nicely. Um, you've got to sort of study the instructions, um, but not too bad from Airfix. Um, and apart from that, those are all the options basically you have for this kit, um, unless you decide to go out and buy the other boxes, which as I say, you can do have the Navy, there's different army versions and all this kind of stuff. Um, you then have in color your markings, only one set of markings for 
the Western Lynx AH7, which is from Afghanistan 2006, which is a nice two-tone camo. Um, I do believe that is the one we're going to be doing. Um, then you've got the stencils. Then it moves into the Land Rover. Um, I'm not really going to actually sort of touch up on the Land Rover um, too much, really, because um, I might not build it. Um, but the instructions look quite good for that. You do have uh, a set of... Um, nice color correlator again for the markings for uh, our land rover which does look just just, just look actually rather smart as well as our eight infantrymen and how to paint them up as well which i'm just going to quickly show you just in case you're going to want to build um, and we might still build our land rover here and not only that it does actually look rather stunning but it is in 148 scale which does kind of put it out of place when it comes to doing armored vehicles because when it's armored vehicles it's it's literally like always you know 135th scale having it in 148 um is sort of um you it know it sort of only puts it in place with all your 148 ape scale aircraft um so probably good for diorama um but anyway moving along um we've got all sorts of really good detail here tire treads on our tires looking really good we've got all this engine section option turret section um all sorts of lovely um well detailed um pieces on here looking very crisp highly detailed two sprues in total um and as you can see we've got a load of sort of flash going on on this area here as i say one or two spots it seems to be almost full of flash but then everywhere there's no flash and again looking at all this sort of high level detail looking rather stunning you can have the engine on display with this and all the underside um inner workings as well looking rather cool um, moving along you all this sort of MG stuff going on we've got a nice couple of SA80s you can sort of whack into the Land Rover just to add that nice bit more detail but yeah looking rather stunning I really do like the look at that Land Rover and what you also get in this kit is as I say you get these um, eight infantrymen which look highly detailed really good stunning um figures to go with say a diorama or something as you can see we've got all sorts of details showing on there all your webbing and everything and um, the flash is rather minimum and um, we've got our sa80s on here as well backpacks and uh, we've got our faces which are also got um, a nice high level of detail as well um you know you got all your knee pads and everything on here so there is so much detail going on with this kit um, it, it, it is yeah I, I really do like the infantrymen as well um, which would be rather cool to paint some of these up as well uh, but as I say um, as as far as this step by step goes um, we're doing the links um, I might be able to get some aftermarket parts in and we might somewhere along the line be actually taking some of these miniatures or the Land Rover maybe sort of build that as well maybe do, do a diorama um, not quite sure yet so let's just um, crack Crack on there and get building um, this this well recommended uh, Lynx kit by Airfix 148 scale. Um, haven't really touched the Lynx at all to be honest for for about a week, and that's because I wanted to make sure um, this arrived. Our big head said, like I said, I want this to to, to I want to use this a lot. So um, just to get this out and just quickly sort of show you what you get in this. Now um, this is the big head set, so it's pretty much all the photo edits that Edard does. For our AH7 here, it cost about the £25 mark is £27. That was from off eBay, it depends where you sort of go. Um, that's the cheapest I could find. You do get um you do get those um, nice masks for this, which is nice one, uh, especially if you like beginner intermediate. Um, we get um, some seat belts, which is all these different seat belts um, for the cabin area and everything, which is rather cool. Plus a little bit extra as well, probably for the seats um, to, 
jazz them up some more as well. You get uh, the interior set, which is like all your cockpit stuff, which remember, uh, I mean, there is no real instrument display panel apart from um, some decals. Um, so that is gonna really come in handy and really jazz that up, uh, as well as a whole bunch more sort of internal detail, sort of round trims and round doors to sort of really sort of liven that up even more. Then we have a exterior set as well, which um, has got all sorts of exterior detail on here, loads of bits and bobs, which again will jazz everything up. There is also some remove before flight tags, um, which I don't think I'm really gonna have this in a sitting pose, because I have brought some crew for it, so probably won't be using that. Um, as far as the big head sets go, you know, they are value for money, um, but then, that's if you want to use all this photo etch. I mean, really, you might only just want the interior stuff, so it's obviously cheap to go off and buy them singly, but you know, if you want to get a lot of photo etch, um, that's a good way to go. Um, then we've got PJ Productions here with some, uh, they do say Royal Navy links, but you can sort of use them for the army versions as well. They're all in nice resin here, and you've got three, uh, two pilots and a crew. Um, so, you know, we, we'll, we'll look at this in a later stage for it, the video. Maybe I might do a bit of figure painting um, and sort of do a little step by step within the video on doing that. But I want to get them in there. Um, so, let's move along with the build. Well, I want to get started with some uh, scratch building, which what I want to do is what's in this picture here, which is um, a bunch of wiring in the ceiling of our cabin. Um, it's like sort of um, radio equipment, that kind of stuff, that sort of wiring. Um, and here is um, our um, roof part of our cabin. Um, really good detail here with all these checks, check um, of all these sort of diamonds going on here, which is sort of representing all that sort of soundproofing fabric, which I want to sort of jazz up a bit more later on. But um, to start with the scratch building um, with these wires, what we want to do, we want to get a couple of um, scratch building materials. So what we've got here is um, some styrene rods here, um, which are of different sort of um, thicknesses, which I have already cut off a nice little piece here, which is um, a nice thickness of um, for our first part of the wiring just up there, as well as um, we've got some of this um, copper wire. Um, now I did get this from, I do believe it was RP Tools, I think it was, um, RP Tools on their website. They also sell this copper wire. This one in particular is 0.3 mil, so nice, really sort of thin copper wire. Copper wire is good to use because, um, you know, it's strong as well as, you know, you can bend it quite easily, cut it quite easy. It's, it's good to sort of play around with in regards to um, scratch building materials. Um, and what we need to do, just getting out our digital caliper here, which we wanna make sure is zeroed, right? And what we're gonna do, we need to sort of find out um, what you know thickness this is, right? Okay, so that there is 0.95. It's almost like one mil. Ish. although actually it's probably not quite so round actually if you turn it but it'll do um, so what you want to do you want to get that size drill bit so it's always a good idea to have you know a nice set of drill bits um, what we just have here now I've already got it ready in um, one of my um, hand drills here and what we're going to do we're actually going to drill the hole for where this is going to go so I'm just going to you know pick a nice little spot just here that should do and we're just going to drill this right the way through right so we've measured how thick our bit of st st styrene um, plastic is there right and we've made our little hole so we should be able to sort of feed that into there which as you can see, nice tight fit, which is, um, you know, what's good about using the caliper is you get the right size bit and you just get a really nice tight fit, right? But what we need to do, um, we need to do something really sort of um, tiny and small. And, and what we want to do is we want to actually get our little bit of st um, stirring rod here and actually put a tiny, tiny 
little hole inside there which is going to be rather rather tricky so what we need to do first off is we need to make sure our end is sort of nice and flat and straight right because I mean I don't know how well you can see but you know that's not been cut too well on the end there so I'm just getting a nice sharp blade here and I'm just going to sort of roll with this right and I want to sort of cut this so you know we at least sort of get the end relatively cut nice and flat ish right a bit better than it was now because what we have here is a very sort of thin um, bit of styrene rod it's gonna sort of break and bend rob rob easily so we need to clamp this down so um, we've got a nice little clamp just here right and what we want to do is actually lock this into place right so I'm just gonna lock this in right and we loosen that off, get it right to the end. Oops. Get that back in there. And there we go. So what I want to do now is again make sure that our little end here is just nice and flat. So I'm just giving it a light fat sanding. Right, remember you want to make sure you just hardly touch this because we don't want it to break because we are talking small pieces here. Right, now we know the wire is 0 0.3 mil. So what we want to do, we want to get out another hand drill, but with this one we want a 0 0.3 drill bit on there. And as you can see, really, really small drill bit. It's very, very tiny, very, very delicate, very, very easy to break. So you really want to be careful um, when using this drill bit so um, we don't need to drill very deep so it's um, to sort of stop yourself from breaking these really tiny drill bits it's best to really sort of push it in loads into the drill bit I mean this one here was like um, a 0.8 or something um, you know we can have that further out because it's not going to be as you know as um, easy to break but this one is so we push it in leaving you know you know, what's that about four mil out there and then what we want to do actually we want to get a pin right and we want to try with this tiny little rod here sort of find the absolute center right by using the pin what we're doing right is we're actually sort of getting the center and we're giving our drill somewhere to start okay so coming in with our 0.3 drill bit we want to very carefully now start to drill in this, right? We want to be very careful. We don't want to be applying loads and loads of pressure, right? We want to try and keep this as straight as we can. We don't want to be drilling through the sides Ooh, or slipping off and making mistakes, right? Very carefully, slowly, slowly drill into this, 